Let's think about a flash separation. So what we have is we have a feed, which we enter our flash separator, and that is at a composition of zi for each of our components. And then when we put that into our flash separator, that separates into a vapour with composition of yi for each of the components, and a liquid with composition xi for each of the components. What we can do for this system is therefore write a mass balance around our whole flash separator to say that if f z i, so what goes in, must be equal to what goes out, so the liquid plus each component in the vapour. As we know, this is a single stage equilibrium method. The composition of the vapour and the composition of a liquid must be in equilibrium with each other. And for that equilibrium, we can use the modified Routes law. So we can say that the total pressure times the composition in the vapour phase is equal to the composition in the liquid phase, the activity coefficient for that component, and the saturated vapour pressure. This we can commonly rearrange just for the composition in the vapour phase, which we often refer to as the k-value. So we have yi equals ki xi. So we can substitute this expression for yi <coughs> in to our original mass balance. And this gives us that our feed is equal to our liquid phase plus our vapour phase, but where we're predicting our vapour phase composition from our liquid phase composition. We can therefore rearrange this, where we're using the fact that if we do a total mass balance on the system, we know that the feed equals the vapour plus the liquid, so therefore the liquid equals the feed minus the vapour. We can now rearrange this for our liquid composition of psi. And we can also write this in the convenient form where we write it in terms of the ratio of the vapour to the feed. So we now have this expression for the liquid composition of each component based on the feed composition the k values for each of our components and the ratio of the vapour to the feed produced. So we know that for the system, the sum of the mole fractions in the liquid phase has to equal one, which is the same as the sum of the mole fractions in the vapour phase. So we can use this fact and we can actually say that the sum of all the liquid phases minus the sum of the fractions in the vapour phase therefore must equal zero. And we can also use our knowledge that our yi equals ki xi for all our components to write this as the sum of our vapour mole fraction predicted from our liquid phase minus our liquid phase. We can now rearrange this equation and pull out our xi to say that xi ki minus 1, the sum is still equal to 0. And then we can substitute in the expression we've already derived for our xi to say that our sum of all our zi's, ki minus 1, over 1 plus ratio of the vapour to feed, ki minus 1, all must equal to 0. And this is the Ratchford 
Rice equation. One of the key equations that we used to derive this was that we can represent the vapour fractions in terms of the liquid fractions. And when we generated our K value based on the modified Routes law. Now that we use if we've got equilibrium between our liquid and vapour phases. But what if we were to have a non-condensable gas within our system? So for example, oxygen dissolved in water, okay? So at any of the conditions that we'd be interested in around the boiling of water, our oxygen would always be a gas. So in this case, what we can do is we can represent our K value for the oxygen using Henry's law. And Henry's law essentially states that the pressure times by the fraction in the vapour phase is equal to Henry's constant times the fraction dissolved in the liquid phase which we can rearrange just for yi which we can see gives us a form of exactly the same with the ki xi where we, in this case we've got ki to be the ratio of Henry's law to the total pressure of the system.